on my mind because they are my very favorite way of getting in front of prospects, building a community, and hopefully having them become my customer. Today, I'm talking to Nisha and Joel about how to build community before the event. So you are warming them up, getting them excited, getting them ready and pumped to go to the event before the event ever happens. Now, this conversation was actually over an hour long, and I'm only sharing a little blip of it today. But don't you worry, I laughed my ass off with them. And this is going to be a series. So today we're sharing the before. We also have the middle. So how to create community during the event. And we're digging into both live in-person events and virtual events. And then last, we'll go into the after event, how to keep the community going after the event has already taken place. How do you keep those relationships going? So super important. It's going to be a three-parter. And in the summer, I've decided to do um, what I'm calling a live concert series where I'm going to share the whole conversation. So for people who aren't getting the behind the scenes on it, my interviews are about 60 minutes, but I only use maybe 15 minutes of the interview in each of the episodes to keep them tiny and bite-sized for you. But this summer, I'm going to release the entire conversation. So that should be fun. (laughs) So you're going to get this in a three-part series before middle and end of community-led growth for for events. And then in the summer, you're going to get the whole shebang in one episode, and you'll get all of the little tangents and hilarity that happened behind the scenes in that one too. All right, so stay tuned. I'm about to share that conversation right now. Today, we're talking about community around virtual events. So how you build community before the event ever takes place, how to continue that community growth during the event, whether it's in person or virtual, because most of my events are virtual. And then how do you keep that going afterwards, which is really how service businesses sell. You have to keep that community going afterwards or they're going to forget you existed and they're never going to actually buy that offer. So let's dig into it. Can you walk me through the before, the plant the seed phase. Yeah, I can dig in and Joel, definitely feel free to chime in as well. I think for the purpose of setting the stage here, we're just going to assume like before your event, these folks are not involved in your community yet. So they may have heard of it, but they're not actively engaging it. They're not really aware of it in some cases. So you're really just trying to plant those seeds, get them involved and pull them in before your event. I think some of The tidbits we'll share could definitely apply in a digital setting or in an in-person setting as well, since we know both formats are very popular today. So I think one of the most obvious but very effective ways is to get folks involved in an email nurture. It sounds like not the most exciting advice, but it's the sexy. It's but it's the most effective. We know this having an owned list of folks that want to hear from you. So I think my first tip would be definitely leverage your email list, get people on, whether that's your newsletter, whether that's somebody registers and you have a pre-event nurture series for if you have a big conference or even if you have a VIP event where you're bringing folks together or even a digital event. You have when folks register, you have a few opportunities where they're open to hearing from you before that event. Go ahead and introduce your community. Let them know hey, we also have this great community you can join. We might plug it during the event, but just so you know, here's some resources for you about this community that we have. Hey there, fellow entrepreneurs and B2B marketers. Before we dive back into the conversation, let me introduce you to a game changer in the lead generation arena, Lead Feeder. Now, we all know the struggle of identifying those elusive website visitors and turning them into valuable leads. But what if I told you there's a tool that not only promises, but delivers on supercharging your lead generation and sales efforts? Enter Lead Feeder. 
Imagine having the power to identify companies visiting your website, track their behavior in real time, and seamlessly integrate it all with your CRM. Lead Feeder is not just a tool, it's your secret weapon for efficient and targeted lead engagement. What sets Lead Feeder apart? It's the ability to provide detailed insights into visitor behavior, helping your sales team prioritize efforts and close deals faster. With customizable notifications, lead scoring, and GDPR compliance, Lead Feeder is changing the game. Ready to revolutionize your approach to leads and deals? Head over to leadfeeder.com for your free demo today. That's L E A D F E E D E R.com. Don't miss out on the future of successful lead generation with Lead Feeder. So I would add into that and say, especially if you're going to go like the email route, email route is probably not my favorite. Okay. I'll be honest and say that. I like get it that it's. It's part of it, but it's definitely not my favorite. It's not the most fun thing for me. It doesn't get like my creative juices flowing. It's just like standard. But I will say, and I have done this before, of adding like a PS line after. Um, yeah. Like when you have, whether it's like the registration confirmed email or an hour before, one day before, all of those kind of standard pre emails, just having you can switch up the CTA to test different lines, all of that at those different milestones too. But having just like a PS line, plugging your community and explaining the value and how it connects back to the topic of the event. And is it where you have a dedicated channel on that specific topic or conversational space? Do you think that folks need a place to hear and connect with peers to dive deeper into it or is there like a hype place or like a channel for the event that like you all have and that you want folks to also join because you're going to drop like questions there or collect questions from folks through that space there are different like things you can do but make it I would say engaging and also explain like the value or like why it's relevant to mm -hmm. folks. Don't just say like, hey, we have a community. Congratulations, you get one cookie for that. <laughs> but like only one. <laughs> uh, that actually might be too generous because like today <laughs> communities are. So what? If the there's a lot not of communities like. Like, you really sell me on it like to your point joel it's like everybody is on board with the community train like it's kind of like okay i'm gonna join another slack group and What's it's in vague it it's and vague too like what is community what is your definition of community it could be your email list but it could be a circle community or weekly zoom sessions what does it mean yeah and i think the email it might not be the sexiest route to go. I think my examples were definitely not the best. It's still early. I'm drinking coffee. But I think to your point, Joel, make it, giving it a creative take. Maybe it is just a quick PS line so you can drop the seed and kind of plant the seed early and then have a few more touches. I hate that word, but introduce it a few more times. I think you can get creative with it. It doesn't have to just be like, by the way, join our community and get a cookie. You can make it something that is fun and something that kind of catches people. And they're like, oh, what's this? And piques that curiosity. Let's and pause here for one second. Joel, continue the thought. And then we'll pause right here because I have extra questions. Sounds good. I was just going to say on that note of being creative. Yeah, add a PS line. But you could also make it, for example, like your email banner too. That can be a great place, whether it's actually in your like Gmail or Outlook and just having a different creative banner at the bottom in your email signature block that also calls out like something big, of course, that's going to be relevant to folks both externally who maybe already are customers of yours or clients or highly aware of you. And maybe it's a great way to remind them of 
something big that's upcoming, but then also for those folks who are maybe more in that like prospect or just curious kind of bucket, it can be a great way to also showcase something of hopefully high value to them too. So taking email, but in a different lens, that can also be a great way. And that's something that we've done effectively in a past role of mine too. So now I will pause and say, Sarah, go back to whatever questions you want to double down into. Okay. Okay. One second though. On that, I have made that change to my signature. Yeah. And I add that CTA into my just standard email signature. If I have an event going on or some sort of lead magnet that I want and I'll, it's made a massive difference. I didn't like, it felt super passive. But it made wow. a massive difference. But oh, just one more. I also added it to my social media cover photos. Mm. So whenever I'm doing a new event, I'll put that in the cover photo. Yeah, I definitely agree that like, how do I say this? Some of these things that seem low lifts actually have the biggest impact because you're hitting people like when they can take action, and when they are potentially most thinking about it. I know, for example, like we were really successful using a similar thing about changing like the creative banner and our email signature blocks in a past role around big things that we wanted to showcase. Additionally, and I would say in a different vein, another company I worked at actually ran ads successfully around promoting our community. And that was actually a really successful way to actually get folks to show interest into it was actually just through ads and not really anything specific around the company. So just sharing like other things work and community can be a great like CTA, but it's all, I would say, in the lens of being clear about the value, if that makes sense, and making it timely and or ideally relevant at the same time. I like that. And we talked about email as a possible community element. What other places are great for community building them? Like circles, Slack, Facebook groups. What do you guys see today as like a relevant place to build your community? Can we give the marketer answer like it depends? It like it, I think the most important part, and this is like a very like tactical thing, like where do you build your community? Like you have to go where your people are, which is very interesting because I will say I in my past lives have been a big fan of, oh, I prefer communities in Slack because I work in Slack all day. Mm-hmm. I'm already there. That was just my preference. Now, unfortunately, I'm at a company that is going away with Slack, which I'm still coping with this information <laughs> so appreciate so your, sad. your thoughts here <laughs> no. um but if, you know, peas. Peas. <laughs> but it's hard now because all these communities that i'm was very active in i forget about it because i'm no longer in slack and it's like how do you solve for those types of problems so yes go where people are i think there's always a an element of you have to give people a reason to go somewhere too so i think that's why i'm seeing more people move to platform like circle or i'm sure there's a dozen other ones out there i don't know joel you might have a more succinct answer than me but i'm go where your people are and also give them a reason to go there uh i would definitely echo that give them a reason like it goes back to just being value focused if it's not a good community in a we're not going down that whole bucket but just understand that that's a key thing if it's not good then like people aren't going to go. As Misha said a few minutes ago, there are a number of communities in the world today. And so either folks are going to say where they are because it is good per se and valuable, or they're going to check it out and then say peace out and find another place. I don't waste my time in places that I don't gain value from I assume Misha doesn't. I assume you don't, Sarah. It's just natural. I'll just say it. (laughs) I would also say around like specific like platform. 
or other things around that kind of vein of like how and where it depends not just like where your folks are who you want to have in the community but also connecting it to business outcomes making sure that you're launching things that clearly are and like roll back to business outcomes and beyond that are also possible for like where you are today either in terms of resourcing or company life cycle etc just being realistic like if you can't do the moon shoot for a star if you can't hit a star hit a cloud because you'll always be there to land on them i don't know i'm just like you can plot that I'm riffing yeah but just be realistic I'm is that. The, okay but just be like realistic is the point of this don't overinvest in tech if you can't actually build and support the program behind it tech doesn't run anything it's like the strategy it's the thought it's the continuation of like you spending time there with your members that makes something in community successful so i guess really that's where i was going with that apologies for all of the moon star and cloud references <laughs> it just happened no i think you're like spot on though it's like tech can only get you so far and i think given the context of a lot of the listeners might be at smaller companies they might be one person marketing teams i think joel and i both have experience startup enterprise everything in between so we're definitely not suggesting like, oh every event you have needs a bespoke community or you need to drop everything and invest in building out a full community. Like it is an investment. It's an investment a lot of folks are making because it does pay off in the long run. If you're just getting started or you're like, I can't list a full community, that's okay. A lot of these things I think can be used to build a sense of community or create a sense of community when you're bringing people together at your event, whether that's an in-person engagement, a digital event, there's still these things that you can do to create this sense of community without having to go all in on building this year-round community strategy. Yeah, and that's a good point. I would just say on that too is like you can, especially from the event perspective, start and like hyper-focus in the sense of if you want to work with folks in a specific geography or segment or industry, like hold maybe monthly like virtual round roundups or like roundtables or meetups or whatever for folks in that space get it in front of them too and then maybe it simultaneously or other like the following week or the week before you do like your own event that's more educational that you actually like lead and speak at and whatnot that's also relevant but through all of these, the point is like you can do something that shows and starts getting the ball rolling to you're going to start meeting folks. Like the more you do and show and truly care about people and the space that they're in, the more they're going to open up to you and say, oh, hey, I'd love X, Y, Z. Um, one of my clients I am working on like a project with right now. They actually just did their first user group. And something that they actually heard from one of the attendees was that a great question if they actually had a space for folks to chat off like asynchronously, aka like a community, whether it's on Circle, Slack, who knows, whatever. But they actually got that question. And it was just really interesting to hear someone wanting that from an in-person event. And so it just shows right. that events can start the conversation. Events can also be like part of the community experience. But I would argue either way, they go hand in hand and they work really well together. Yeah. And I think a great point too, Joel, is another, I guess, channel for pre-event community promotion, kind of tying it back is that you can absolutely use, if you have an existing community, use those folks for referrals. If, to your point, if you have a regional event and you happen to have folks that you know live in Boston or Chicago say, hey, 
we're hosting this dinner or we're hosting this online roundtable. Would love to bring like-minded folks together. Do you have any recommendations? Feel free to invite your friends. Like just using your existing group of community members to continue to grow the community and get folks into your events. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> this is turning exactly like what Misha and I said during our <laughs> prep session, which was like we would just be riffed. <laughs> Sorry. But on that, I would just also say that, like, yes. And you can also bring members like into the fold of like actually being speakers or leading events or being on panel or like getting insights into what's top of mind for them. Is it like their biggest pain, something that they want to celebrate in their space? Or is it like a platform, like creating a huge wave throughout it? Like you get those things, weave it into your experience. So it's again, timely relevant. If it's not either, ideally both of those, luck. I feel like now if you ask people like, what's top of mind? Everything is just like AI. Yeah, uh, that's all I, I don't really love it. I don't. Like, like besides that. AI, what's top of mind? But I do love that idea of, again, pre-event asking folks like, what's on your mind? What do you want to talk about? What's pressing hot button, hot takes? This event is for you. So, you know, help us help you and make the best use of your time. Exactly. And, and that can also be a great way to invite panelists or other folks into it and say, like, hey, that's a great topic. I actually don't know a lot about it. I might be able, would you be interested in being on a panel of potentially one other person if I bring someone else? And if you can find a peer too, and then I could be like the moderator. If you're like the community leader, or the marketer, or the owner of the company, whatever, that could be like a really basic, but still impactful way to bring folks along for the ride make more of that like one-to-one -one connection between those folks who you're engaging with, but also then humanize the event itself. So it's not just like you, you got three other people. So now you're up to four and you can promote them. You can send out like social packets for them, like all of those sorts of things. So it's just good. As long as I said one more time to really beat this horse, like it just has to be timely and relevant. That's all. And you're taking awesome. that relationship to the next level by giving them an opportunity to be spotlighted in that event. So that's just going to bring in more referrals, more promotion, because now you have multiple people promoting that event. And something I like to use community for pre event is filling the event. So I, the easiest lift I've had that had a big impact on my event getting sold out is meetup groups, creating meetup groups that are hyper-focused on a specific target audience for that event. And meetup will fill those communities for me. It pushes them out to the right people. And then I just put those events on that meetup group and it just, they fill so easily. So that has been a really easy way to build community around the event, but also like gain awareness around it. Yeah. And I love the meetup group too, because I've seen some in Boston or other areas. And I think an interesting feature is you can see who's coming to the event. A lot of times they'll preview like X amount of people have already registered or signed up or whatever. So it's social proof. But I think if you're not using a third party that gives you that visibility, small again small list but just like introducing people before the event so whether that's if you're having an intimate online round table here's the 10 other people that are going to be here today or for an in-person event again works better for smaller events but the, hey here's the people that are coming to tonight's dinner and give them an opportunity to like connect and meet with folks before the event to break some of that tension of like awkward strangers in a room and you're like oh yeah. i already know this is sarah sarah so nice to meet you in person I gives them a little bit of that connection before the event. Yep. That's exactly actually what one of my community cl consulting clients does before our monthly dinners. So we'll spin up a specific and private space for all of the attendees of that dinner. And then I'll share out the names, titles, companies, 
and LinkedIn's of all of the attendees. Usually 24 to 48 hours in advance of the event. And people, exactly, like just get to meet, check it out. One time specifically, I remember someone was really surprised to see another person from their same kind of industry. I was like, yeah, happy coincidence. <laughs> Let this work. That's really good advice. I love that idea. And I haven't even thought about doing something like a dinner. <laughs> so I love a good dinner. Yeah, it's such a good idea. And it's so personal. Misha, that's what we'll do when we go international. It'll just be like 10 person intimate dinners. I love that's those a types good of events, idea. though. It's like I just prefer to sit and have like long, deep conversations with folks versus that a lot of your bigger events sometimes they'll do the everybody happy hour. And that serves a, a purpose too, for sure. But I definitely love like a good, let me just get to know five people super well and their role and their problems and challenges versus speed date, try to meet 20, 30 people an hour. That's a good like introvert event too, introvert where you can event. have those intimate conversations. Yes, for sure. All right, beautiful humans. I hope that you got a ton out of this conversation. We learned about how to do email marketing right to build up that community before the event, how to create communities outside of email, as Joel so gracefully (laughs) said that he much prefers, and how to get people excited about the event and kind of amp them up beforehand so they're ready to network and get to know new people. And If you liked this episode, make sure to like, subscribe, review. Thank you. I would love some more reviews. Go over to Spotify or Apple Podcasts to do that. All right. So I will be airing the middle part, the how to create community during an event in March. And next week, I'll share my conversation with Nathan Schlafer. He is the founder of Marketer Mate AI. And if you've ever heard me talk about the four C's of content marketing, um, it's basically content marketing so you don't get burned out. The second C is campaign content. So we'll be talking about how to use AI to create campaign content so much faster. So get excited for that. And I will share the during the event community building in March. I will see you then. Share with a friend. (laughs) Bye.